Greetings everyone, welcome to our third tutorial on Microsoft Access, which is a relational database software program that runs on the Windows operating system. So if you have a copy of Microsoft Office, then you're afforded a copy of this database program that you can use to track data, organize data into a list. It might be some academic list for example it might be for customers or products maybe vendors even employees all right so the first tutorial that we had looked at the ways in which you go about creating tables within microsoft access how you go about locating the program on your computer so if you're not clear on how you should uh, create tables be sure to look at one of those videos okay now here I have already created two tables for a company that is really looking for ways in which they can establish a relationship between the business and their clients, right? So my first table here is a client's table that will accept information about each client, like an email, for example, the date they purchased a product from the company and their first and last names. If I should change the view here and go to the design view where I actually ask access to accept certain types of information like first and last names, the phone numbers, then that essentially allowed me to set the different types of data within the, the program all right note that my client id has a primary key here now the primary key field of a table serves two important purposes one is that it contains data that uniquely identifies each record no two records can have the same entry within uh, a, a field that is designed or designated as the primary key field secondly the primary key field helps relate one table to another in what is known as a one-to-many relationship and this simply means you can have one record from a table that is related to many other records within another table so this um, clients field for example might include uh, the client id and that client id is actually linked to the email and the email date of another table okay let me close both tables accordingly now when i created my my email table let me go to my design view here when i created my email table i created this table without a primary key there's no primary key set here so what in order for me to create a primary key i'm going to have to click on the field where i want my primary key to be designated in this case i'd like it to be my email id so i should click on on the email id field if it is not selected and then within the tools group note that there's a table tools design tab and within the tools group i'm going to simply click primary key and that in essence adds a primary key icon to the email id field here okay note that i can actually click on the email id once more i could click on another field if i made an error within the database to actually change that to another field name in this case i actually want it to be the email id so i'm going to leave it as the email id field here okay and from here since i have now set my primary key i could simply close my table within the database and of course it's going to ask me to save yes i do want to save this table and from here i can now choose to actually relate two tables within the database if i if you should go to the database tools tab and within the relationships group there's a relationships option and the relationships will actually bring up both tables you might get an applet in the middle showing the clients and the emails table if that happens what you'd want to do is to simply double click on both s to open the screen like mine so once more 
if you go to the data tools tab and click on relationships should open both tables for you in this case i would actually like to relate the client id in my clients table to the client id in the email table that way i'm actually connecting both tables by using the client id this will be a common field between both tables that will that i'm going to use to make that connection of course i want to hit the enforced referential integrity option so that this increases the integrity of the data itself ensuring that i'm not making errors as i go along and from here i can simply hit create since i have now created a relationship between both tables using the client id function i can close this table okay and essentially this is how you'd go about creating a primary key and how you'd go about creating a relationship between two tables and accordingly you can now continue entering information inside your tables and allow microsoft access to create the email id for you so for example let's say um our first let's let's enter our one for the client id so our first customer was rebecca rodriguez i believe her name was let me enter up my client's table actually roberta gonzalez so i'm way off so roberta gonzalez was our first customer and she actually sent us an email on the 1st of march 2017 and um Roberta Gonzalez, the email content was Roberta Gonzalez does not like the product she bought and is requesting a refund. And just like that, Microsoft will automatically assign uh, an email ID. I had a record here that I had deleted. This is now two, and it's um, we're actually telling um, Microsoft Access that this is client ID one. All right, that concludes our tutorial here on creating relationships within Microsoft Access and creating primary keys. Please be sure to view our next video when we're talking about how we can create queries within Microsoft Access. Thank you.